I am indeed with Ray Robson. Back-to-back -back victory for you, Ray, and a big one against uh, Wesley. What are your initial feelings right now? Yeah, um, I feel like I would expect to be like more joyous. I'm very happy, but yeah, I'm a little bit surprised, I guess, how well the game went for me. Uh, I've played Wesley many, many times. I think prior last, like, I don't know, eight games or something have been draws usually when I'm, I've been white many times and I usually get zero advantage and just have to immediately make a draw. So today went a lot differently. We were looking at your head to head and I think he was leading two victories to a one and eight draws. So it was very, very combative within, between you two. And you guys know each other from college days. How would you assess Wesley as a chess player? What are his strengths, weaknesses? Um, well, he's... Give us some insights. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, he's, he's good at everything. He's a universal player. I guess more positional um, in general, but obviously he can attack. Um, yeah, he, he studies a lot. He reviews his lines all the time. Um, but he probably wasn't expecting that I would know this line that we had today. And he is he can be a concrete player if he thinks the position is good. Even if it looks risky, he may just go for it. Um, so sometimes he might be susceptible to attacks, which I guess <laughs> is uh, what Did happened. you know this line, uh, the spawn sacrifice? Yeah, so I was. it's not a super common line, but fortunately I recently had reviewed this line, so uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see it. Um, and then yeah, after take, take, um, I believe, yeah, h3 is an interesting move, preventing bishop g4, and after knight bd7, um, I think queen c2, okay, apparently there's one game, but I think it hasn't really been analyzed much. Mm -hmm. The idea is you're just delaying the development of the bishop. Um, if white had played bishop b2, I think d5 is supposed to be the correct response for black. Um, whereas keeping the bishop there one move longer means the bishop might go to g5 in some lines. I think here d5 just is losing for black, maybe bishop a3 or something. In fact, let's check that. Yes. The Engine confirms bishop to a3 or bishop to g5 mm -hmm. seem to be very, very strong. Actually, bishop to a3, rook to e1, rook to e7. That's or bishop e7, yeah. <laughs> or bishop e7, that's yeah. a problem. Yeah, yeah. So b6, I remember, is a, yeah, a move. And okay, bishop b2, bishop b7, um, d5. Yeah, I actually knew this position still. And so you are still within your preparation at this point. Uh, I mean, oh, I, I had analyzed this previously, yeah. Um, and yeah, basically, I knew. My idea is if he plays something similar to what he did in the game with the queen f8, then I can go for g4, king h2, g5, and just attack. Um, and that was basically all I knew. So yeah, he played c6 here, uh, which I didn't remember from my analysis. So I was hoping it would be a mistake. And apparently, it is. Apparently, it is. Yeah. It is, and it, especially with the moves that you found over the board. Take us through your thought process at this point, because you only have one path, and you have to be extremely precise. You thought for 18 minutes. What were you thinking about? Yeah, what I'm were a, you calculating? I'm a little bit surprised there's only one win here. I mean, it looks overwhelming. For example, rook g1 is a very natural move as well. Um, yeah, he can put the, the queen on e7 in general. I wasn't sure, yeah, to, to give the f8 score for his king. I mean, going back to cd, I was um, immediately drawn to this idea of bishop h7, bishop f5, or bishop f5 immediately. But bishop h7 felt a little bit better, forced him onto the long diagonal where my bishop is, and also his king can't uh, run away to the queen side as quickly. So this felt very natural, but um, there are a couple of things. So after king h8, bishop f5, I'm just starting to take. So knight e5 looks kind of forced, f4. And one option was knight takes c4. Knight takes c4. Yeah. And now after bishop f6, gf6, if black's king were back on g8, I assume it's completely crushing even just rook g1. Here I was, uh, took me a while to find the way because rook g1, I'm a tempo down, so I wasn't sure if it was working. Apparently it's still working, but uh, I hadn't calculated deep enough to be sure about that. But then I noticed uh, I have queen e2, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have queen h6 ever because knight f7, and fg queen h5 is just made. So once I noticed this queen, queen e2, queen h5 is always working, um, I became very happy. So then I was about to play this, and then I realized, OK, I should check knight g6 one more time after f4. Knight g6, and initially, I intuitively, I just felt completely winning. But then when I was calculating, I couldn't see like a clear win. Like if I take on g6, f takes g6, queen takes g6, I thought he has 
queen e8, and somehow he's, he's just holding. Mm -hmm. So I could play after knight g6, rook g1, which maybe is, yeah, okay, apparently it's also crushing, but I wasn't completely sure. And then, then I started calculating what I did in the game, bishop f6, gf, knight f7, queen f7, bishop g6, and I saw, okay, I'm only down one pawn, his king's completely open, g files open, queen's gonna go to f2, h4, f5, h5, and I didn't see any way he could organize his pieces in time, so I decided this should just be winning, and that's when I played bishop h7, bishop f5. Yeah, and your intuition was definitely correct, because he's just one tempo short. Yeah, so actually it's interesting, so after queen e7, if we could just yes. go back there. I thought the game is just over, I mean, I thought queen f2 was crushing, um, but I just, for some reason, uh, missed f5, which is uh, the only try. And then, yeah, after rook g1, okay, I thought it's still just completely game over, but I missed the uh, rook to g7, and yes. his king somehow has a shield, and I can't attack, and then I became worried that somehow I've, I've just messed it up, because it must have been, I knew I must have been winning. Um, but then I think, yeah, I was fortunate this queen h5. So queen h4, king g8, queen h5, and the point is if d takes c4, um, bishop h7, King f8, rook takes f5, uh, rook f7. Initially, I only saw queen h6, king e8, bishop g6, but then he should give checks and make a perpetual. Mm -hmm. Or maybe checkmate me. <laughs> yes. um, but after Sorry. rook f7, there, on move, yeah, after 33, rook f7, one move back. Yeah, I, I noticed that bishop g6 finally. Yeah. So he doesn't have time to take on c4, he has to go back and then cd. And e2 is covered by your e2 queen. is covered, and still I had to find the breakthrough. But then I realized I can do what I did in the game: just put the queen on h6, rook on g2, and then I'm always turning bishop f5. And he just he can't move any any pieces. Um, if he plays like bishop b7 in the final position, bishop takes f5. I thought it's the simplest take: rook g7, and then I take on d6, take on d5, and queen comes back to g2, and I'm just up a piece. So, Ray, congratulations. Uh, Big victory for you. Guys, any questions for Ray? Yeah, yeah, first of all, congratulations, Ray. You started with five draws. Uh, you, can't, you, you, you couldn't win a game. <laughs> and uh, suddenly uh, the clouds parted, the sun is shining. What happened? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm very surprised. Like, obviously, I was playing Hans yesterday and then Wesley today, so still two super strong opponents. And was definitely was never expecting to get two wins. Um, I don't know, yesterday I think Hans was just um, a bit over aggressive at the critical moment and today, uh, I think today obviously I got lucky that uh, he played into this very dangerous line which I happened to study recently. So yeah, I mean I played well both games but I think I've been playing pretty well throughout the tournament just uh, maybe my opponents gave me a few more chances and uh, yeah, I was, I was ready to pounce. Wonderful. Yes, sir. You, you men yes, sir actually mentioned today that you lived together with uh, uh, Wesley and you played thousands of games of Blitz. <laughs> like, and did, do you think you actually uh, get something from uh, Wesley and his style while you were playing all these games? And uh, did, you, did you cooperate with him after you stopped uh, college and uh, later on? Mm. Yeah, I mean, we worked a bit together when we were at Webster, but mostly it was him, you know, he, that's when he kind of started to be really serious about chess and started his ascension. Um, so he was studying all the time, um, and I, I was not at that point. So occasionally, like, I would join him and analyze some things, but mostly it was just him on his own. Um, as far as playing with him, if that helped me, uh, definitely helped me a lot. I would say that's almost the only reason I improved um, when I was in college is just through being around him, playing against him, asking him questions about certain types of positions. I Once I realized that he was actually just a much better player than me, I started listening to what he was saying and uh, I think it changed the way I thought about chess. So, um, you know, I think I went from 2600 to about 2650 at that time and I think primarily that's just because of uh, learning from him. Wow, that's really nice. I mean, that's really impressive. And today you even managed to win. Uh, I think it even <laughs> feels really good today. Okay, congratulations once again. Yeah, very nicely done indeed, Ray. You've still got a second half of a tournament to go, but it feels good to be doing it with a plus two and undefeated score. Let's just jump in. 